What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a timed background for our apps with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, I'm going to show you how to do timed background image changes. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, as you can see, we've got a little app here. It's got a timer going, and every once in a while, the background image for the entire app changes. So I did a video, I don't know, months ago, I think it was video number 147 on the Kinter playlist, it talks about making images as backgrounds for your app with Kinter. So I definitely recommend you check that video out if you haven't seen it before. It shows two different methods to do it using place and using a canvas. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go watch that video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a canvas because it's a little bit better method. But what we've got here is a timer and every once in a while, it's just sort of flipping through to a different background image. And you can set it for as long or as short as you want. I don't know why you would do this, but I've been getting a lot of questions about it lately. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do it in this video. So let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with almost 200 videos. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So, okay, we've got our basic Kinter starter code. I've got an app that's going to be 1000 by 667. And that's just because that's the size of the images I want to use. I've got three images that I saved in my c slash gui slash images slash bg directory and we could pull up a windows file explorer we could just see you know we keep all of our kinter files in the c gui directory i've got this images folder it also has some Im images i went ahead and made another folder inside of here called bg just to hold these three images so we'll be using that as well so okay let's head over here and let's start out by creating a couple of variables i want to create something called r images and this is going to be a python list with those three images in them or however many images that you want i also want to create a count we want to keep track of where we are in the list and we'll do that with a count variable and i want to make those two global because we want to use them inside a function so we're going to make them global okay so let's start out by creating our r images python list and that's just going to be a regular python list and you might have used lists for lots of different things in python you could put text in there you could put numbers you could put other lists in there you could put objects you could also put kinter things in there too so we want to put photo image in here and we want our file to equal and then what are these going to be well we remember we have images in our images directory slash bg slash whatever the image is and this is one.png so we could do it like this. I'm just going to copy this and paste it two more times. We've got another one called 2.png and another one called 3.png. And those are just these three things right here. One, two, and three in our GUI slash images slash BG directory. So images BG. I can use a relative path here because this timer underscore BG dot pi file, which is our main file, is saved in that same GUI directory. Or we could be explicit. We could go C slash GUI slash images, whatever, but we don't have to do that. So that's good. So we've got a Python list and each item in the list is a different photo image. You might not have known you could do that, but you could definitely do that. And that's pretty cool. So now before we get into all the timer stuff, let's just create a canvas. So let's create a canvas that we're going to use to hold the background image. So I'm going to call this my underscore canvas. And I'm going to set that equal to a canvas widget. And again, if you don't know how to do this or what I'm doing here, go back and watch that video. I think it's 147. I'll try and put a link in the description below. You can check out that video, but I'm just going to kind of roll through here. We want to put this in root. We want the width to equal 1000. We want the height to equal 667 because up here, that's what we made the app the size of because that's the size of the images I want to use. And then we can go my underscore canvas dot pack. And we need to set a fill of both and we need to set expand to equal true because we want it to stretch out to the entire size of our app, right? So, okay, now we can just sort of set the canvas image by calling my underscore canvas dot create underscore image. And we want to set this at the coordinates of zero and zero. And we want the image to equal something out of here. So we can just copy this. And remember, this is a Python list, so we could say, hey, use the first one, that's zero. That's this one right here, the zeroth item in the list. 
Python list start at zero, so we could just do it like that. Finally, we need to anchor this guy in the northwest. So up and to the left, northwest, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So strictly speaking, I think that should work. So let's go ahead and save this. This is timer underscore bg.py. So let's head back over to our terminal. I'm in our C slash GUI directory and let's run Python timer underscore bg.py. And when we do, boom, we get this app. It's got this first image as the background. Very cool. Now you'll notice there's sort of a white bar, sort of like a border around this thing. You may want that, you may not. We can get rid of it by heading back over to the code really quickly. And let's see where we defined the canvas. We could set a highlight thickness of zero. So let's go ahead and save this, run this guy again. And when we do that sort of white border thing is no longer on there. So however you want to do that, that's fine. So, okay, we've got our canvas. We've got an image on the background. Now, what happens if we want to every five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, minute, whatever, switch this to a different image, just sort of automatically. Well, we can do that pretty simply. Head back over here. So I'm just gonna create a function called next, All right? And inside of here, let's set global count. We need to keep track of that. And up here, when we created this count, let's define it as negative one. So when this next function runs, we're gonna add one to the count. So it starts out at negative one, we'll add one, that'll make it zero, and zero is the first one in our list. That's just a way to make the first one start first, right? So let's come down here and let's run some logic. Let's go if count is two, because we've only got three items in our list, zero, one, two. So if it's at two, that means we're at the top. We need to start back over again and set the count to zero. So if count equals two, then let's come up here and grab this and paste it in. We want the image to be zero. So if the image, so if the current count is two, that's gonna be this guy. We wanna start back over at zero, which is this guy. And setting it to zero, we'll do that. So then we wanna set our count equal to zero. Okay, else, let's paste this in again. But instead of having this at zero, let's have it at count, and then let's add one. So our count is gonna start out at the very beginning at negative one. Negative one is not two, right? So we're gonna do count, which is negative one, plus one, which will make it zero, right? Then <laughs> we just need to increment our count, right? So count plus one. Okay, so when our app runs, we want this next function to run right away. So we could just call it right down here when the app first runs. So now this will do it one time, but if we want it to continue every X seconds, we need to create a little timer in here. So I'm just gonna call root dot after. I have videos on after in the playlist. If you're not familiar with what that does, just does a little timer. And inside of here, we could set how many seconds we want and then what action we wanna take. So this is in thousands. So 5,000 equals five seconds. So every five seconds, we wanna run this next function, which is this guy, which will do all of this stuff, right? Increment our counter, throw up a different image using this thing, and then keep going. So we can set this to anything we want. I'm just gonna set it to five seconds. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Let's run this. See if this worked. So Python timer.bg. There we go. Three, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, boom, one thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five, boom, one thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five, boom, back to the beginning. And it just keeps cycling. And that's kind of all there is to it. We can set this to anything we want, right? If we want to get crazy and set it to ten thousand, that would be ten seconds, right? just divide it by a thousand every time. So here we can run this again, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010, boom. Come on, there we go. I counted a little fast, but you get the idea. We could really speed it up if we want to by changing this to a thousand every second, right? If we do that, boom, 1001, 1002, it's already doing, boom, it's going faster, 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 right? So the reason why we use Canvas is because then you could put other widgets on top of it. Uh, go back and watch that video 147, I think. I'll put a link to it. 
Uh, but uh, that's why we do that. You could also use place. That's a popular thing. I talk about that in that other video, 147. So if you want to use place, check that out. You don't have to use a canvas in that case. You can just use place. But you see, man, that's making me dizzy. <laughs> that's one very simple way you can have a background update every X seconds using Kenter. Now, you might have to use threading. I have videos on threading. If it starts to get in the way of other functions and things you want to run in your app, I'll leave that to you. If people need me to talk about that, leave questions in the comment section below and we'll talk about it. But hopefully you can figure it out by watching my threading video, which is also in the Kenter playlist. And uh, so check that out. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemecom where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemecom and I'll see you in the next video.